There are the tried and true X Men teams and rosters, and then there's everyone else. With so many X Men comics constantly ongoing, though, I'm hoping some listed here can get some more love. This X Men roster we're about to talk about marked the return of Chris Claremont to the X Men in a full time capacity. Extreme X Men Volume 1 is a series that started in 2001 and ran until 2004. It was a team that featured my girl Rogue as leader. You know I'm all about Rogue. The original Extreme X Men roster also featured Beast, Psylocke, Bishop, Storm, Sage, and Thunderbird on the team. Lifeguard, Gambit, and Slipstream were also added to the mix throughout. Honestly, I love Lifeguard and I don't think she gets enough love. This team was originally brought together to find Destiny's premonition filled diaries, but of course, along the way, was distracted by many other imminent threats. As you do. The Great Ring of Arako is exclusively made up of Omega level mutants, which really tells you how much of a powerhouse team they would be. They are the ruling body of Arako, which is the sister mutant island nation to Krakoa, which of course eventually goes on to become Mars and. Yeah, we've had a whole adventure with them. In fact, Arako and Krakoa are actually less siblings and are more romantically tied in terms of the islands themselves. They're both sentient mutant islands and for a long time they were attached to one another and also uh, kind of in love. Although now they prefer to be separate. They tried to be reunited after Arako was liberated, but then uh, they just weren't feeling it at that time. You know how it is. Arako's ruling government has four distinct sections which govern different parts of their civilization, with some areas having more power at given times. For for example, in war times, Dawn is the area that typically gets more say, as this is the area that would rule and govern during that time. For years, the Iraqi were at war with the men, so this would have been a very prominent section for many years in their history. And it's something that the mutants of Iraq struggle with releasing themselves from, the obligation to always be on guard and always be at war. While Uranos faced off with the Great Ring of Iraq and uh, pretty much cleaned their clock, pretty recently actually, this should not make us undermine their strength, as Uranos Thanos is basically on a whole other level by himself as one of the most powerful, ruthless, and evil Eternals that we've ever seen in comics. So, yeah. Not all teams on my list here are going to be the good guys when it comes to our X-Men rosters. And this is uh, this is one of those teams. It was simply too good for me to not include. And the fantastic Extreme X-Men, this is a team of villains from alternate realities, and even perhaps the main reality that our multiversal X-Men team, led by Earth 616's Dazzler, must face. The 10 evil Xaviers features one that is a cowboy, another that is a Cthulhu-like floating brain, and one that is a giant Akanti whale, and so many more amazing weird alternates of the X-Men Men's leader and mentor, Charles Xavier, aka Professor X. This one is from the 2010 series Generation Hope and was under Cyclops' banner, ultimately following the events of Regenesis. Though the team itself was led by mutant Messiah Hope Summers, and its roster consisted of No Girl, Pixie, Primal, Sebastian Shaw, Transonic, Velocidad, and Zero at that time. Though originally Hope's team started pre Regenesis as just being five mutants, including Hope herself as one of those five, with Velocidad, Oya, Primal, and Transonic on the team. The team was sort of brought together as a search and rescue group who were acknowledged as the four of the five lights of Cerebra. Hope basically triggered the rebirth of the mutant gene, activating these mutants, and the fifth light was what they sought and why they basically came together, heading to Tokyo, Japan to find out this fifth light. Zero was the mutant they sought, who would of course eventually join the team. While everyone might focus on the battle of the Adam Future Brotherhood team, as Raze has you know, a tendency to seal the show, we all love Raze, plus my girl Zorin Jean, and also featuring Molly Hayes, people tend to forget about the awesomeness that was the future X-Men team as well, the real future X-Men. This team featured a much more skilled Iceman, who now was known as Ice Wizard, Wiccan, who had become Sorcerer Supreme at this point, Chimera, who is believed to be Storm's daughter that she had with Black Panther, Shogo, Jubilee's son, known as Sentinel X, Colossus armed with Magic Soul Sword, Kid Omega as Phoenix, and Jubilee as Wolverine. I kind of love all of this. Jubilee as Wolverine's a little weird, but I'm still kind of into it because, yeah, Jube's following in Wolverine's footsteps is super cute. The Dark X-Men are what we get when Norman Osborn is basically put in charge of all the super teams you can imagine. And yes, as I said, not everyone on my list is going to be a good X-Men team, because that's not as much fun. I love a little bit of evil sprinkled in. Now this team came out of the Dark Reign period over at Marvel Comics. Norman ended up becoming the world's greatest hero, at least in civilians and the government's eyes, after he successfully shot and killed Skrull Queen Veronica 
donkey, in essence ending secret wars and in a weird twist saving the day. Not what you'd expect from Norman, but there we were. As a reward, he was given the task of creating a new organization to take over for the disbanded shield. Norman created Hammer in response and made his own teams of both Dark Avengers and Dark X-Men. His initial roster included Dark Beast, Mystique, Mimic, and Omega. I feel like Dark Beast is such a great evil mutant that he generally just ends up being on almost every evil mutant X-Men team. But also, I love Dark Beast, so I'm kind of fine with that. Although to be fair, Hank was giving him a run for his money recently when we had the previous incarnation of Hank as the main continuity one in the X-Men. And I wish Dark Beast was still alive though, so I at least had some way to rationally explain that whole version of Hank's behavior. Who I thought might have been Dark Beast for a while, but then considering that Dark Beast is dead and everything else, and we also see proof of that. Yeah, sadly that was not the case. Spider-Man Special Class is a great and overall underrated team. They were pulled together as a result of Storm, finding some papers belonging to Logan after his death, mentioning the intention to put together a special class of mutants for Spider-Man to teach, made up of kids who were deemed most likely to become villains. <laughs> Which honestly for some of these some of these people, I can't believe that he's like these people. <laughs> they could become villains. They could become villains, bub. They go on a couple of adventures together, but tragically wouldn't last too long as a team, but I just love the idea of Spider-Man teaching a group of mutants. The team included Ernst, No Girl, Rockslide, Hellion, Shark Girl, Glob Herman, and iBoy, with quite a few of these younger mutants being some of my favorites. See if you can guess who is among them in the comments, and share with me some of your favorite mutants, please. The Extinction team truly is a scary one. They came together in response to the fact that the Phoenix Force was believed to be returning. It was thought that the Phoenix Force wanted to merge with mutant Messiah Hope Summers and have her act as its host. While the X-Men were more optimistic about the Phoenix's return, the Avengers were not so much. As a result, the mutants deployed their own team to fight against the Avengers, but which was initially also created to defend the mutant island of Utopia and the world against extinction level threats, hence the name. Extinction Team. The Extinction Team included Cyclops, Magneto, Namor, Storm, Danger, Magic, Hope Summers, Emma Frost, and Colossus. Now, that, talk about a powerhouse lineup. That's wild. Never mind the Phoenix Force. This team, in and of itself, seems frightening enough to justify the Avengers' concern. If these mutants all got together and I was on the Avengers, I would also be worried. Assuming they don't trust the mutants having power, too. Which, yeah. Which, while at times both teams have been allied, has always seemed to remain a bit of a touchy subject to the Avengers, who kind of have a history of not playing well with other major superhero teams in the Marvel Universe. In fact, they also even have a history of not playing well with each other within their own team. So, yeah. This team is what I like to call the other XSE. This team also spiraled out of a team that we talked about previously, Extreme X-Men. XSE here stands for the Extreme Sanctions Executive. Similar to the original XSE that Bishop was a part of in the future, this team is also like a military police force meant to maintain, and in some cases by force, ensure peace is kept between mutants and humans by force. Storm was asked to create the team by the United Nations and eventually would increase its numbers by recruiting the rest of the X-Men, making this another government sanctioned mutant team, kind of like X-Factor was, or at least, you know, X-Factor was to start. Team members have included Bishop, Cannonball, Magma, Rachel Summers, Psylocke, Rogue, Sage, Wolverine, X-23, and Gambit. What a fun team. I think it's such a fun team. I mean, when you consider that the sword bearers of Arako were all pretty much kicking the champions of Krakoa's butts, we have to put them on this list, right? I mean, it's just too, it's just too cool. While the Iraqi are newer when it comes to the mutant status quo and what we consider to be an X-Men team, considering we, you know, are just getting to know them still, they've still, they're still pretty new to the canon, and they're loosely tied to the X-Men through both their connection to Apocalypse and of course all being mutant, at the end of the day, they are still mutants, and I personally think we could kind of see them as X-Men, you know what I mean? Or at least X-Men adjacent. And for that reason, I think that we can include them on this list, which is really more about, you know, mutant teams than I would say specifically X-Men sister teams or X-Men. X-Men rosters, I'm kind of keeping it a little bit more general here because there's just so many cool X-based 
teams. We just use the name X-Men because you know it makes more sense in relation to Marvel Mutants and it's more appealing than if we put you know Marvel Mutants in the title of this video. It's more clickable, you dig? The sword bearers of Arako didn't just best their Krakoan competitors in contests of combat and wit, but also in some of the more charismatic and honestly odd contests during the Ten of Swords or Otherworld tournament. Also beating them in a dancing competition, a runway model one, and a scavenger hunt to name a few of those seen in X-Force issue number 14 of the 2019 series. That's about it. I'm your host Amanda McKnight. Until next time, you stay nerdy YouTube.